So if two light nuclei come together with enough energy, they may fuse into a new nucleus. This new nucleus is lighter than the original pair and some energy is produced. The same thing is true with fission. If a large nucleus breaks into two nuclei, these two nuclei are now lighter collectively than the original nucleus. Mass, in both of these cases, seems to have disappeared from the universe and been replaced by some energy. So energy and mass are interconvertible using E equals mc squared. Looking again at the first example, where two deuterium nuclei collide, there's the mass before, and when they come together to now form a helium nucleus, the mass of this helium nucleus is slightly lighter. Where did the mass go? Well, the mass turned into energy. That's what that little red flash was. And as a side note, the nucleus has now become more stable as it's edged towards iron on the binding energy per nucleon diagram. Looking at the maths a little more closely, notice how the products are lighter than the reactants. There's a change in mass there. And I'm actually gonna work out what that change in mass is. It isn't much. So this missing mass, it's not really missing, it turned into energy. In this case, the fusion energy of the sun. Now we can work out how much energy it is using E equals mc squared. You could argue it's delta E equals delta mc squared. The change in energy is the change in mass times the speed of light squared. So putting in the mass change, it has to be in kilograms. This is physics now. Multiplied by the speed of light squared, that's gonna be a heck of a big number, speed of light squared. So even a small mass is gonna give out relatively more energy than you expect. It's 3.78 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. And that's to make just one helium atom from those two hydrogen isotopes. Well, we probably need to work it out in different units, not joules per atom. To be honest, IB Chemistry love their kilojoules per mole. So how can we convert that? Well, first of all, if I multiply it by one kilojoule, which is a thousand joules, I'm gonna turn my joules into kilojoules. And instead of working it out for one atom, I better multiply it by six times 10 to the 23 to get it for a mole of atoms. So if I take my original number, divide it by a thousand, multiply by six times 10 to the 23, that's my answer. That's how many kilojoules are produced when you make one mole of helium. Looking at a fission equation now, what's the mass of the radon 222? Given the following information. Well, again, the product side have to be lighter than the reactant side. Now you can see how much energy is produced. 7.7863 times 10 to the minus 13 joules. So it's just a matter of converting that into atomic mass units. So the mass and the energy on the reactant side equals the mass and the energy on the product side. So let's take my energy from the product side and work out how many atomic mass units it is. So I'm gonna to convert to kilograms first and then to atomic mass units. So how do I turn energy into kilograms? Well, you just have to put it again through E equals mc squared. Except this time we're searching for m. Solving that for m gives me Now the sig figs are gonna get a bit messed up here. Uh, I'm retaining more sig figs than I should, but I, that's okay. So my mass is 8.651 times 10 to the minus 30 kilograms. 
that's pretty small. That's probably correct, isn't it? It's got to be a really tiny mass. And now in the IB data booklet, it gives you the conversion from kilograms into atomic mass units. I'm actually going to add one more decimal place to that conversion because I want one more sig fig. And so finally, I've converted the energy into atomic mass units. And I'm going to put that number up there. And now all I have to do is solve for x. So I've turned the energy now into atomic mass units. And so the mass of the reactants must equal the mass of the products, because I fixed any energy problems we had. And there's your answer. That seems about right. 2, 2, 2. Yep. The mass of the atoms of the bomb that went off over Hiroshima decreased by less than 2 grams. And that shows you the real power of this E equals mc squared. A tiny mass can make an enormous amount of energy.